Hello and welcome to this very special interview with Speaker of the National Assembly of Seychelles, Patrick Pillai. Seychelles is a small island country in the Indian Ocean, comprising a group of 115 small islands. The economy of Seychelles is heavily dependent on tourism. In fact, India is an important source of tourism for the island nation. Last year, about 8,000 Indians travelled to Seychelles to spend holidays. It receives about 2,80,000 tourists a year, roughly three times the Seychelles population. India and Seychelles have very close relations and both countries are working together to ensure safety and security in the Indian Ocean. India has actively supported Seychelles in training the SPDF, provided a Dornier aircraft, two Chetak helicopters and a fast attack craft. Indian ships uh, regularly visit Victoria and have been active in combating piracy in the waters around Seychelles. In 2015, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi became the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Seychelles in 34 long years. He wrote that India not only considers Seychelles as a neighbour but also as a strategic partner. Let's know it from the Speaker of the National Assembly of Seychelles, Patrick Pillai, the significance of these parliamentary engagements, how it helps in expanding the democratic ethos. Thanks very much, Mr. Pillai, for joining us in this programme. Thank you for inviting me. My first question to you. What really is the role of uh, high-level parliamentary delegations in extending or in expanding democratic ethos? Well, uh, let me first say that uh, in relative terms, I am a new speaker. I won't say I'm a young speaker, but I'm a new speaker and uh, coming to visit the largest democracy in the world with whom we've had a long standing collaboration and friendship is something that is very significant to us. As a matter of fact, when I was elected speaker, the Indian High, Commission, uh, High Commissioner who was there at the time, who we met uh, during this visit, had come to visit me and said, we would like to invite you and a delegation to India as the, one of the first uh, delegations to visit outside Seychelles. And we have honored that. We have honored that. The significance of it is that we are all learning. I managed to meet in London in January this year, the Honorable Speaker of the Lok Sabha, and it's good to meet her again on home ground. With regard to why we're here, well, it's a learning process. And when friends meet friends, we're able to reaffirm friendship and cooperation. Mm -hmm. That is basically, in, one, in a nutshell, why we're here to learn, but also to say that India offers a number of training courses in uh, different aspects of parliament parliamentary practice. We've availed of that for many years. In fact, only this last month, we had one of our young parliamentarians who came for training in India, in Delhi, and I hope this is not only going to continue, but will be enhanced. So very well said. Sessions is going through a learning phase and uh, no one can teach uh, the democratic ethos uh, better than the world's uh, largest democracy, India, of course. So, now, you've emphasized that new assembly in uh, Seychelles has an important role in bringing true democracy in Seychelles. In fact, you have eloquently also asserted, and I quote, if I may, we will never have an impressive economic growth, development and prosperity for our people without democratic practices, transparency, good governance in public service and the private sector. How is Seychelles Parliament really expanding on the democratic ethos, as I was asking earlier, and the spirit of public participation for ushering true democracy in Seychelles? Well, uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I understand that you meet every um, week from Monday to Friday, not on Sundays and Saturdays. We, as a sixth assembly, when we were sworn in last year, we decided we would meet twice a week. So we meet on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays and both these days the sittings for as long as we are in chamber is uh, televised is broadcast live both on TV and on radio so it provides us with a perfect medium to be able to ensure that the whole nation is educated on how we should progress as a democracy how we should strengthen the institutions of uh, state to ensure that they function, to ensure that there is justice and democratic pr process. Mm -hmm. It's something which is very, very important. And I often, as speaker from the chair, I tell the House that 
every sitting is like a civic education lesson for the class and the class is the whole country. Mm -hmm. So we in the assembly, how we are doing that? Well, we've accepted now that we in the opposition are in the majority in the House for the first time in 40 years, we have accepted that we have to be working in collaboration with the executive and the judiciary, the three arms of government, to ensure that we move forward as a modern democracy or towards a modern democracy. It cannot be otherwise. Mm -hmm. It cannot be otherwise. This uh, uh, practice of insulting each other, all this dirty politics, is behind us. We have a leaders forum, for example, mm -hmm. which is uh, done every two, if possible, at least every three months, where the president, as the executive, as the head of the executive, with his vice president, meets with me as the leader of uh, the House, as a um, speaker, as well as the leader of the opposition in the House, as well as the leader of the government business, which is the leader of the, the elected members from the majority party who are in, my, in uh, minority in the House. So this is a concrete and tangible example of how we're demonstrating to the nation right. that the executive, the, the legislative and the judiciary have got to work together. Right, so functioning of a country must go beyond political vendetta, as you rightly, Absolutely. As you rightly said. Uh, and uh, if one has to understand the awareness level among the citizens of Seychelles, what kind of demands really come in? Uh, if uh, s someone who is an outsider, from the perspective of an Indian citizen, uh, how they should view Seychelles, how they should understand Seychelles, uh, what is really the understanding of public participation in Seychelles? Well, this is a very, a very interesting question. Well, the first thing I'd say is uh, the fact that uh, the broadcast of the sitting of the assembly, and I say that uh, very confidently, is probably one of the most listened to and watched program because everybody wants to know what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, without blaming anybody, I must first say that I was, I am now in the opposition, but I was a minister of state in the actual government for 16 years. So I was part of the government at the time before I decided to quit and then join the opposition. So people want to be informed. And the Seychellois politically is a very informed nation, precisely because the, uh, we all speak Creole, that's mm -hmm. our local language, mm -hmm. and everything that we say or that is debated whether it's a res resolution, whether it's a public bill, whether it's a private bill, whether it's a question time for uh, the ministers to come and explain certain aspects of their work, of the work of the executive, people are very much aware of what is happening. And in actual fact, because it's broadcast live, and in the House, the members can receive mail and text, the participation of the public is beyond what you and I would expect, mm -hmm. because people are sending ideas, well, the minister said this, can you ask that? Which is equally helpful in also building opinions uh, on important issues, issues uh, which actually affect each and every country today, be it Absolutely. climate change or be it uh, trade talks. But interestingly, if one talks about India today, uh, uh, the president, uh, the newly appointed president, and of course the prime minister has timely uh, reiterated again and again on the issue of participatory governance, that how each and every citizen today is a nation builder. Is the same communication happening also in Seychelles the role of the citizens in uh, creating uh, new avenues and creating in, in nation building because the opportunities they can create for others. Absolutely. At two levels. You know, one of our major missions as an assembly is representation. We've been elected by people and we're, we represent people quite apart from the oversight and the passing of laws. But beyond that, you have a president who's made an engagement where he said there are three key words that will guide his presidency and that is good governance is uh, transparency, and the third one is accountability. This is now like a mantra for the executive, for the judiciary, for the legislative. A mantra because people are expecting us to deliver. Mm -hmm. You cannot hide what has happened in the past. So through consultations, through public meetings, through consultations with NGOs, in fact, we've got a, an umbrella with a lot of NGOs, and I must say how happy I am that a lot of the NGO is just emerging, uh, sometimes embryonic in their own style, right. but they're led by young people. Mm -hmm. And this in itself gives us a lot of hope. Now when it comes to participation, which is your, the gist of your question, 
You know, the president has been making visits where they say that poverty, he's actually gone to places where he himself has said he never realized mm -hmm. we had this kinds of problem. So that consultation with people is not taking place only at the level of the president and his entourage from State House, but the representatives of the people themselves in the House are organizing meetings in their respective districts or constituencies to consult their constituents. Right. So your point is very important. Mm -hmm. We cannot have democracy without participation of the people. We cannot otherwise, we'll be um, drifting towards tyranny or dictatorship. Uh, so we have to ensure that this happens. Mm -hmm. And I speak hand on heart to say that this, as far as my mission is concerned as speaker, is to support the executive, support the judiciary, to achieve precisely what you've asked. Right, and most importantly, the role of the youth. Now, India is a very, very young nation. We are talking about demographic dividend spending, which must increase in the education and health sectors. Uh, uh, in Seychelles, when we look at problems like corruption, black money, because this is a very uh, important issue today as far as public discourse in India is concerned, do you expect there can be convergence of societal attitudes towards dealing with issues like corruption? Absolutely. In fact, I... Uh must confess that I uh, jumped into the political ring on one ticket and it was, uh, I was asked, what is your first challenge you feel in Seychelles? And I said, corruption. Your second, I said, corruption. Your third, corruption. What has actually happened now is we have a very strong anti-ACCS, it's the uh, Anti-Corruption Commission Seychelles. And its role now is uh, really to put the bar as high as possible because people are asking, We've had corruption. We've actually exposed in the assembly examples, and I'm talking of tangible examples of mm -hmm. corruption, and there's no turning back. There is no turning back. We've just, uh, the president has just uh, increased the, the number of members or of commissioners on the Anti-Corruption Commission. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, now prosecuting because we're building up uh, evidence the big issue now in Seychelles mm -hmm. is what we've discovered with regard to auditing of two groups. One is what's called the Financial Intelligence Unit, and the second one is the National Drugs Agency, which is meant to control the bringing of heroin. Mm -hmm. And I hope we have a chance in this interview to talk about how India is helping us in terms of uh, narcotics trafficking, quite apart from human trafficking. Right. But based on, on uh, your question, mm -hmm. I think uh, the institutions of state, the legislative, through motions, through questions to the uh, ministers when they're invited to the assembly, mm -hmm. are ensuring that nobody's going to get away with corruption. And I mean nobody's going to get away with corruption. That's the message which we're sending loud and clear every sitting that we do. Right, so there will be a heavy hand to tackle the issue of uh, corruption, which remains a big threat uh, as far as development, uh, achieving development goals uh, for countries are concerned. And uh, even in India here, there, there have been series of measures in the last few years to tackle the challenge of corruption. You mentioned narcotics and how India is helping uh, Seychelles. Uh, my question to you when we talk about the big Indian Ocean diplomacy and we have seen uh, uh, this term being used repeatedly in last uh, a few years, the potential of Indian Ocean diplomacy, not just from the perspective of safety and security, but also from the perspective of uh, gaining, uh, 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 Seychelles gaining from the Indian Ocean diplomacy. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we recognize, for example, that when we were hit um, in the late uh, uh, 2008, 2009, one of the first countries that came to our help when piracy was really beginning to bring uh, minus dividends, if you can put it that way, to Seychelles, India was one of the first uh, countries, a friendly country, that came forward to help us. You see, we have uh, 1.3 million square kilometers of uh, sea, of our EEZ. We, a small country, cannot have surveillance facilities or capacity or competence to be able to survey that kind of uh, EEZ. India's providers, as you quite rightly say, it's not only with uh, maritime uh, capacity, but air capacity as well for the Air Force to be able to work together in collaboration to be able to track illegal fishing, uh, piracy, um, trafficking in humans. We've uh, had that as well. But also, more importantly, 
the ones who are looking at the Indian Ocean as a source to come and um, fish and take away the stock that we have, because this is our oil. Mm -hmm. When we talk of the blue economy, it's not, all the res not, not only the fish in the sea, all the resources there. But you have countries in the neighborhood, and I'm talking in the southwest Indian Ocean, yeah, but come, come, um, other boats coming as far as uh, some countries in Southeast Asia are coming to fish in our waters illegally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the kind of support that we're getting from India is allowing us to have results. Mm -hmm. We've cons confiscated, confiscated about three years ago um, a DAO that was coming from one of your neighboring countries uh, with uh, millions of dollars worth of heroin. But on our own, without help from others, without intelligence uh, exchange, mm -hmm with countries like India and those in the East African coast, we would not be where we are today. You mentioned blue economy, and that's where even India is focusing now in building marine resources, marine ecology. Where do you see India and Seychelles cooperating together in really addressing the challenges or the potential of the blue economy? Well, you see, the Indian Ocean is uh, one of the oceans where we have stocks of resources, and I'm talking of fish in particular, which when we talk of the North Atlantic, or even the Pacific, the stock that we're talking about are not comparable. And we cannot compare like with unlike, because uh, we recognize, and our neighbors recognize, that we need to not only accept and talk about what we have, but also protect that. And when we talk of the blue economy, now that we talked and yesterday when we met the Prime Minister and he talked about the blue economy and the need for us to cooperate to ensure that uh, the resources that we have, whether it be fish or any other resource, it's important that we're able to provide support to each other, but for a country like us to be able to, sub to, uh, to uh, receive the assistance and competence expertise mm -hmm. of the Indians to help us. So it's an area where I cannot as a session where I emphasize how important it is for us to, uh, how important it is for us to collaborate. So it's an area which is always on the agenda when we meet. Mm -hmm. now, we are living in very challenging times. So, uh, each and every country is focusing more inwards today. Protectionism remains a challenge. We are talking about trade and investment ties also, but changing geopolitical environment uh, and the maritime and security challenges that comes with it, uh, even within our neighbors uh, and of course countries which are uh, more on the other side. How do you see Seychelles and India cooperating from the front of uh, maritime and security? Well, you know, we, we, it's no secret, uh, neither to the Indians or to the Seshwa, that we've talked about one of our islands, how we can work together. That would benefit mutually mm -hmm. both countries when it comes to security, when it comes to surveillance, etc. So that is on the card. In fact, we have talked about that with the different personalities, our delegation, during this uh, visit to India. And we're hoping that with time, maybe sooner rather than later, we would have a delegation at the highest of levels to be able to sit down and work out the modalities, not necessarily the nuts and bolts, but at least some of the bigger bolts and the bigger nuts, <laughs> but the modalities as to how we can move forward in that, because it's going to benefit both Seychelles mm -hmm. and India. But we want to do it in a manner that is transparent, as I say, that we talk about it, people are aware why we're doing what we're doing, and there's no hidden agenda anywhere. But security is very important in this modern age. We don't, we don't have to go far, just look around us in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. So there is no hidden agenda and of course uh, security is a common concern not just for Seychelles but of course for India too and India and Seychelles can cooperate together. But tourism, because that is a major revenue generator for uh, Seychelles and the economy of uh, Seychelles and we know that Seychelles is a group of islands. How mm -hmm. threatened uh, your country feels from the issue of climate change and do you see India and Seychelles collaborating together and working in the area of global warming, climate change, greater research and development in this area. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, anybody who doesn't recognize that uh, we, it's with us, it's here, climate change, then we are really uh, living in denial. We, are, we have had a lot of assistance uh, from, uh, from India. With regard to climate change per se affecting uh, tourism <coughs> in Seychelles, I wouldn't say that this is very evident uh, now as it, would, it is in some countries like Maldives because of the nature of our country. Okay. We have, uh, as you've well said, over 100 islands. These are ones we 
we came to see that we're there. We also have a few that are reclaimed and man-made islands that mm -hmm. we use is using for all kinds of purposes, including housing, but tourism projects as well. I think the good thing with, uh, with tourism is you need to have stability. And stability relates to what I was talking about before. We are now in a position where we're living in a cohabitation. And in a cohabitation, the biggest challenge is to ensure that there is stability and peace. And to have stability and peace, yes. there must be a dialogue, mm -hmm. which is what, as I described earlier on, mm -hmm. is important for us as a legislative to be talking to the executive. But the tourism itself mm -hmm. is now taking an interesting turn when it comes to India. You mentioned that earlier on, on in your introduction. Right. We're now having more honeymooners coming to Seychelles. Mm -hmm. You have a, a growing middle class in, in India. You have a huge population. The potential is there. Mm -hmm. It's for us to be able to do the right steps, to tap that. And it will be beneficial, of course, to us in terms of revenue collection. But it will also be beneficial to, uh, to Indians who come to Seychelles mm -hmm. to see the kind of melting pot that we are as a nation right. and to see why living together and respecting each other is mm -hmm. important in this global village. The that kind we of cultural today. diversity, multi-ethnic, multilingual uh, Seychelles, is, uh, there's, there's enough to learn for other countries uh, from uh, Seychelles. And as you rightly pointed out about tourism and the number of tourists who actually go from India to uh, visit Seychelles. In fact, um, more than 10,000 Indians are living uh, uh, in Seychelles uh, in a limited population, population of Seychelles. The potential of people-to-people -people contacts in building a, a cultural cooperation between two nations. What's, what are the pos possibilities that exist? Oh, very, very much so. You see, it's not only, um, we talk, we've talk. we just talked a while ago about tourists, but it's also um, the participation of uh, the Indian diaspora who are there in the cultural and uh, economic and social life of the country. Mm -hmm. You have a lot, of a lot of groups like the Lions Club, the Women Lions Club, Club the Rotaract, etc., who are doing a lot of work with the less advantaged, the disadvantaged groups, uh, especially the orphanages, the old people. So there is that. But there is also a uh, huge population in relative terms. When I say huge and you talk 11,000, mm -hmm. some Indians listening to us may be saying, well, this man is silly. Mm -hmm. 11 is not huge. But in relative terms, in for relative Seychelles, terms. Seeing the population of Seychelles. That, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, you have 11,000 construction workers living there. It has a big impact in terms of development because when you talk of development, we also have to be conscious of the fact that there has to be buildings and you need a lot of infrastructure, whether you're talking of institutions or uh, public service like hospitals and schools, you need an infrastructure. And with the pool of expertise that we have, I'm talking of technical expertise and vocational skills, mm -hmm. we do not have that. So we have a lot of Indians who come in. Okay a lot from Gujarat, mm -hmm. and uh, helping us in the economy, the development of the economy of Seychelles. It's very difficult to actually summarize all the experiences and all the knowledge of a country and what all we can learn uh, from a Seychelles in a half an hour program. But if I have to ask you final two questions, what India can learn from Seychelles and what Seychelles can learn from India? And of course, what has been the most fascinating experience for you here in India? Well, uh, in India, <laughs> I'll tell you, very honestly, uh, I, I'm amazed at how the skills that you have developed in different aspects, and I'm talking particularly in technology. You know, whether you look at, uh, uh, some people describe Bangalore as the Silicon Valley of, uh, of India. But where, whatever field you look at it, the, str um, the strengths and the steps that you've undertaken as a nation is amazing. Of course, when we visited the Lok Sabha and the Upper House yesterday, we were amazed uh, at the discipline, the debate. I was told and I asked the Honorable Speaker, Madam, is it always as calm as that? He says, no, <laughs> Speaker, it's not always as calm. Mm -hmm. But I like the debate. There seems to be order. And we've learned from that. I'm talking as a speaker. For example, you can read on the screen who's talking, what time he's got to talk, mm -hmm. to make his intervention, how much time is left. These are issues of efficiency that one has to learn from. Mm -hmm. But more importantly is your free press, your democracy. Mm -hmm. We are now looking at uh, Access to Information Act. Right. And we've talked about that with our, our friends here. We're saying that you, you're going that path. We'd like to see what you do so we can learn from you. Mm -hmm. We don't want to rediscover the wheel. Have good practice 
Let's learn from you. And this is one of the areas that I need to follow up when I get back. And I'm sure it's a learning phase for Seychelles, but it will emerge, in your words, as a true democracy uh, in years to come. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Pillai, for joining us uh, in this uh, special interview. There are huge uh, opportunities and, of course, potential, too, uh, in the bilateral relations between India and uh, Seychelles. And that's all we have for you in this interview. Thanks very much for watching.